I have some terrible news for every company making pro controllers that isn't GameSir. You just lost. Merry Christmas, get fucked. A month or two ago, they took a stab at an anti-stick drift pro controller with a one millisecond response time, but just like all the other devices with Hall Effect magnetic sticks, they were only made for the Nintendo pad, I, pad, uh, deck. Yeah, so until today, no Xbox controller has featured anti-stick drift thumbsticks or a polling rate higher than 500 hertz, AKA a response time of two milliseconds, which means the G7 SE is the first of its kind in more ways than one. It's so unbelievably good, even at its price point, I think I'd recommend it over the Elite Series too. From head to toe, my outfit is $500 right now. Cool, let's all strive to be you, bitch. <laughs> I don't know if striving to be me is the way to go. GameStar was kind enough to send one over to me uh, a month before release, so I had plenty of time to put a review together. This is the first time I've had one out on time since like 1993, something like that. I don't really review products next to the days that they're released. It's damn near impossible to make a well thought out, thorough, researched, tested video in like two to three days. Probably shouldn't take a month though. Me and this video have been held at gunpoint for the past 30 days. There's nothing I could do, but I got like 50 to 60 hours of use. So strap yourself in for the ultimate review of the Gamester G7 SE, the world's first anti-stick drift Xbox Pro controller. For the most part, the original Gamester G7 and the new Gamester G7 Special Edition are essentially the same controller. They weigh the same, they look the same, the face plates and thumbsticks can be interchanged between the two, and the Nexus software is used for both devices on PC and Xbox. They even share a 250 hertz polling rate or a four millisecond response time, but do keep in mind the SE will soon be overclockable to 1000 hertz, and at one millisecond, that technically makes it faster than the previous title holder of the fastest Xbox controller, the Victrix Gambit. I've been told by GameStar this is an option that'll be added in the software later, much like the T4 Khalid, how it got its software update for its overclocking ability about a month and a half after it was released. We're currently in the situation where the overclocking isn't available right now because releasing finished products is lame as fuck. You also can't perform this overclock manually using HID USB F. With any luck, the day of this video's release, maybe it's out? Who knows? Keep an eye out, A, for updates to the Nexus app, and B, when you first start up the app, Look at the bottom after you go onto the profile section, just like it is with the T4 Khalid. Maybe it'll be different. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully the G7 and the G7 SE get this, not just the G7 SE. But again, we'll see. I'm just going to clear things up now for the people who were curious when they clicked on this video. The differences between the G-Sir, it is currently 5.59, 6 a.m. It is 6 a.m. The only significant features the SE doesn't share with its father aside from the skin color of course, are obviously going to be the Hall Effect sticks, but you also don't get the rubber grip, which is plastic on the SE, and the clicky ABXY and D-pad buttons have been replaced with membrane switches that feel like stepping in a pile of wet dog shit. In the competitive sense, I don't really think it makes much of a difference with the ABXY buttons, they have a similar travel distance, so I don't really think it matters, but the D-pad does suffer a bit from the lack of tactile switches, it travels a bit farther, in the D-pad on the uh, original G7, and in both the D-pad and the buttons, they're not as satisfying, but who cares. This could have been an attempt to keep the prices the same, you know? This has hall sticks, but this has clicky buttons. That's a load of horseshit. If you look far and wide, and very close, there's a game store controller with both of these. The Hall Effect sticks and the clicky ABXY buttons, and it's the same price. Well, yeah, no shit. This is literally the very first Xbox controller to be equipped with Hall Effect sticks, which is a huge deal. And if it also had the G7's clicky buttons, the G7 would literally be pointless. I have a series of videos that depict controllers with Hall Effect sticks, but they're all for Switch. These are magnetic, so friction plays less of a role in the demise of your controller. Although it's still possible to get drift through other means, the Hall Effect has no effect on the spring, which can still wear out over time and cause what I like to call sloppy sticks. But for the most common form of stick drift, this is a valid deterrent. And in this case, they do it without sacrificing the performance. In fact, they increase it. These do feel a decent bit better than the sticks on the G7, which are just normal sticks. Ew! Dude! What the fuck? My best description of them is 
smooth. They're buttery smooth. They have less resistance to them than the normal thumbsticks I'm, I'm used to using. I did purchase a force gauge specifically for this video and for all the other videos in the future now. From what I can tell, the looser tension made small movements extremely easy and large movements a lot faster. I will be honest, the consistency of Hall Effect sticks between the controllers that use them it's been pretty shit. These ones are particularly special. Golikit's Hall Sticks, for example, which you'll find in the King Kong Pro 2, the 8-Bit Ultimate, no chance in hell they're ever competing with these. I am going to... Anyways, ignore that. Uh, these... Are, uh, Jesus Christ. I hate dropping shit so much. I feel ridiculously confident with these sticks. Like, overly confident. I've gotten some clips most no lives would be proud of. Damn, I miss being good at video games. I mean, kind of. Ah! Due to the commonality of stick drift, I would place the G7SE, because of its Hall Effect uh, superpowers, at the top of the list of reliability for Xbox Pro controllers and Xbox controllers in general. The Elite Series 2 comes with these saggy man tits for thumbsticks. They're ridiculously heavy, and they very quickly stress out the spring and lead to this sloppy motion than thumbsticks. And then in games like COD, it causes stick drift because COD's super sensitive. And if the spring doesn't eventually make the thumbstick unusable, these certainly will. This has far superior sticks for a quarter of the price few extra buttons and software. It isn't four buttons like it is with the Elite Series 2, but their simple nature makes them accessible to literally everyone. By the way, I know what you're thinking. No, those are not trigger stops. I just fucked your whole day up. My bad. Those are button locks if you don't want to use one or either of the rear buttons. It stops the button from actuating. Never seen that before. It's very strange. Maybe it's cool for people who squeeze their controller. Can you just fucking like make trigger stops or something? If you can make these, you could do that. It's the same situation with, you know, four rear buttons. I think, honestly, at a point sometime in the near future, we could probably get a controller with all the features that people have been very vocal about for like 70 to 100 bucks from GameSir. People pay 90 bucks for this shit. People love GameSir's controllers, so let's make it happen. I'm gonna start a hashtag. Hashtag four button gang. Every Instagram post, every YouTube post, every community post, every video, everything. We want four buttons, trigger stops, Hall Effect thumbsticks for Xbox or PlayStation. We don't care how expensive it is. I mean, I do. Please don't fuck us over. <laughs> bro, please, bro. Why are you do? <laughs> the ultimate hallmark of all pro controllers at or over $100 is software and the ability to use or take advantage of said software on the fly. You can switch between save profiles on the fly using M plus any of the ABXY buttons. Each one is capable of featuring a custom button layout. You can remap every single button on the controller. There are thumbstick dead zones if they're needed. I put them bitches on max, left them there since day one. And of course, you can use the hair trigger mode to activate hair triggers for the shooters. Although, just like with every other game for controller, I don't recommend you do this with the hair trigger toggle, do it manually by yourself using the dead zones. The way the hair trigger option is set up is borderline psychotic and sexually assaulted my gameplay experience. Lastly, you can alter the vibration settings. There are rumbles in the triggers, and that's about it for the software. The T4 Khalid app has a lot more going on, but it has like pride flag RGB or whatever. In lieu of RGB this time, they went with the whole magnetic faceplate thing. This can be swapped out for the G7's faceplates, which is nice would have been nice, but they don't give you an extra faceplate. Instead, in the box, they give you some pretty bitchin' stickers, not gonna lie, I like them a lot, and one month of Game Pass Ultimate. Now, in my upcoming review, I believe of the G7, I insensitively called it the N-Word Pass. I apologize ahead of time for that. I don't even know why I thought that. The real N-Word Pass is PlayStation Plus. The... G7 Special Edition Summarized is a power enhanced controller, so cheap, wired, two rear buttons, with higher quality components, the software of a $200 controller, sticks built to withstand the test of time, and one day, with an update very soon, that same software is going to make this controller the fastest Xbox controller on the planet. As soon as GameSir is ready and decides to release that update. There's no shortage of reasons to buy the G7 SE. It's easily the most recommendable device 
ever. The original G7 is nice if you are specifically looking for the cheapest route to clicky ABX Y buttons and a D-pad. I have a strange feeling 90% of people are probably still going to choose the G7 SE. Either way, I think it is time. I think it's time, Gamesir. You guys have the best budget pro controllers for PC, Xbox, and Nintendo. Whether or not you guys decide to tackle the PlayStation market, entirely up to you, but we need a premium product. A $100 to $150 pro controller featuring all of these features combined with the added benefit of four buttons and trigger stops. Pair those with a one millisecond response time, clicky ABXY and D-pad buttons, and Hall effect sticks, and if we're lucky, a wireless connection, yeah, it would literally be the most unbeatable thing on the planet. It'd be what I've talked about for years, the, the perfect Pro Controller. Games from making a $100 Pro Controller would outperform every single one priced at $200 and even $250 in the case of the Razer Wolverine. I don't remember how, that's a super long name and I don't care. And honestly, if you guys ask me for a recommendation for PC, Switch, Xbox, Gamester is probably going to come up at least once. They are crushing the market in record time and to celebrate, I have a three-part Gamester series coming. This is part one. Tomorrow is part two. Tomorrow's for the Switch boys, as well as the PC players, mostly the PC players. So if you wanna see that, be sure to subscribe because the T4K, mildly more interesting than this, not gonna lie. And if you like this video, dis I don't dislike. I've said some shit in this video, but I haven't said like crazy shit like I used to. I'll just let somebody else say some crazy shit. You guys take it easy. Thank you for coming. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, throw it back on a real one. Yeah. <laughs>